This video supports the key steps of each assessment method in the Brake Assessment Manual, downloadable at roadsafety.transport.nsw.gov.au. A vehicle's brakes are its single most important crash avoidance system, and modifying your vehicle could affect its braking system. When a vehicle is modified in a way that could affect its safety, it must be assessed by a certifier. There are two parts to the assessment. The certifier first gives the modified vehicle a thorough inspection. When they are satisfied that the modification has been done properly and the vehicle is safe, they will give you a compliance certificate. Table 1 in the manual gives a list of modifications that affect your vehicle's brakes that need to be assessed before registration. The range of tests needed depends on the type of modifications to your vehicle, and the manual guides you on the different methods for assessing your modified vehicle. Replacing parts and components with equivalent parts and components, or using optional parts or components approved by the vehicle manufacturer are not considered to be a modification and don't need assessing. If you intend to modify your vehicle, there are four methods available for having your vehicle assessed. One, using approved aftermarket components. Two, using components previously tested on a similar vehicle. Three, completing the installation checklist and obtaining data from a static brake test machine. Four, dynamic road tests. You should decide which method you want to use before you modify your vehicle. Method one doesn't require any tests. For method two, providing there are already tests done to a similar vehicle, no further tests are required. If you modify your vehicle using approved aftermarket components, it will not require any testing. If you intend to use this option, you must make sure the components are compatible to your vehicle and they are installed according to the component manufacturer's instructions. Once the modification is completed, you must arrange to have the modified vehicle assessed by a certifier. The certifier will simply confirm the compatibility of the components, that they have been properly installed and where the components are fitted in the vehicle. The vehicle is in good condition and free from rust and other defects. You can choose method 2 when a modification uses the identical braking system or components to those that have been used in a similar vehicle that has been previously tested. For example, when common modifications are done to a group of similar vehicles, such as vehicles in a motoring enthusiast club. This method can be used on individual vehicles or when identical components are used in assembling a number of cars from the same kit. Put simply, this method recognises that the test results for a modified vehicle may be applied to another vehicle. In all cases, the certifier must have the results of the test done on the original vehicle. As a part of the assessment, the certifier must ensure the vehicle is similar enough to the tested vehicle and the components are the same. If you choose method 3, you will need to make sure the components are properly installed. Use the checklist in the manual to guide you. Take the vehicle to an approved facility for a series of static brake tests. Take the vehicle, the completed installation checklist and the above test results to the certifier for assessment. The certifier will either give you a compliance certificate or request more testing. The basic performance test is completed for all modified vehicles and assesses brake performance. The same procedures are then used for all of the tests. Examples of other static brake tests include The front brakes are disconnected and the vehicle is tested on the static brake test machine and checks the rear brakes can bring the vehicle to a stop with the front brakes disconnected. The results show the front brakes did not operate during the test and all the braking force was applied by the back brakes. Remember to reconnect the front brakes at the end of the test. 
The rear brakes are disconnected and checks the front brakes can bring the vehicle to a stop with the rear brakes disconnected. Remember to reconnect the rear brakes at the end of the test. The vehicle is tested to ensure the brakes can bring the vehicle to a stop with the booster disconnected. Remember to reconnect the booster at the end of the test. Dynamic tests are conducted on a road or a test facility. If you do dynamic tests on the modified vehicle, you should use a licensed and competent driver. You should also engage a certifier to conduct or supervise the tests. Before any dynamic tests are done, the vehicle must be checked to make sure it's roadworthy and can safely do the tests. If the tests are to be done on a public road, approval is required from the local council and roads and maritime services who may impose conditions on the tests which must be obeyed. The stretch of road you use must meet the test conditions described in the manual. If you aren't able to use a public road for a test, a suitable venue must be used. Appropriate equipment must be used to measure and record the test data. The following types of equipment must be used as a minimum. An inertial type direct reading deceleration meter that is capable of reading the average fully developed deceleration. A pedal force gauge a device such as a fifth wheel or GPS for measuring speed. For more information, including a demonstration of the dynamic tests, visit roadsafety.transport.nsw.gov.au. Transport for New South Wales acknowledges the following organisations for their assistance in producing this video.